How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Elvis Drugs Review. Today, we're looking at some another product from Atherin. We're looking at an Atherin Genesis Amtrak P40DC in the Phase 3 scheme number 822. As you can see, it has paid way too much for this thing, but oh well. As you can see, it has Tsunami 2, which means it has sound and it's officially licensed uh, by Amtrak, which is really cool. And there's the beautiful Atherin Genesis. Uh, that's their new logo, too. If we take a look at actually this Conrail SD80 Mac, this was the old logo, and that is the new logo, which is honestly pretty darn cool. It looks very nice. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and get this box open here. Ow, I just hit my hot stuff in the head with the corner of my shelf that's directly above the review table. So here's our diesel locomotive operator's manual. So it tells us like how to lubricate the locomotive here, as well as the list of sound functions, which would be very useful. As you can see, we have the classic sign up for Athen News. We don't need that. We're just going to toss that in the. Ow. We're going to toss that. And here is an exploded diagram of the locomotive, which is very nice. And we have a Horizon Hobby extended warranty kind of information about that. Piece of foam right here. And there is our locomotive, all nicely packed up and such. And there's a little bag right here which contains some little spare parts that I'm not exactly sure what they are. I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments down below. All right. Let's slide the blister package out of the way. Piece the foam. And thankfully, because this lo locomotive has a... It's monocoque, and also it's a full cowl uh, body. There's no foam to deal with. And it's actually very heavy, which is very nice. All right, so now let's get into some history. Alrighty, and now onto some history. By the late, by the early 90s, Amtrak's fleet of F40s were starting to show their age, even though some had only, even into some, were only about 10 years old. But regardless, things needed to change, and they were struggling to keep up with the longer trains that Amtrak was starting to do. So, in 1993, Amtrak placed an order with General Electric for 44 P40 DC passenger locomotives. Now, originally they were called AMD 103s. Um, I forget what all of it means, but in terms of P40 DC, the P is for passenger, the 40 it, it, uh, indicates the horsepower, 4,000 horsepower, and DC is direct current. These were designed to be short enough to fit in low-profile tunnels, like in the Northeast Corridor and some of the tunnels that are on the East Coast. And they, had, and they had extra bracing installed in the nose for collisions. The sleek and modern design made the locomotive more aerodynamic than other models, which made them more fuel efficient. And they were also equipped with head-end power to provide power to the passenger cars. Now our locomotive here, number, eight, number 822, she was built in September of 1993. Now, in 2011, she was selected to become a part of Amtrak's 40th anniversary heritage fleet, and so she was given the F40 style of Phase 3 scheme as opposed to what she's wearing right now. However, in 2020, she was involved in a collision with a semi-truck and deemed um, basically unrepairable because it's a semi-truck, a large vehicle. And so they put her into storage at the Beach Grove shops in Indiana. All right, so now let's get into some details, starting with the front. All righty, so now we're looking at the front of the locomotive. And starting at the top, working our way down to the bottom as we do. These two little dots here on either side of the windshield, those are strobe lights. And when the locomotive is, uh, instead of the ditch lights flashing, those are actually what flash, um, which is kind of a shame because I like flashing ditch lights. I don't know what this is right here, but I assume it's probably a marker light. As you can see, we have two, a two windowed windshield right here. And as you can see, there are window wipers right there, which is very nice. Here is our number right there, 822. I believe these are the sand filler hatches right here and right there. Amtrak right there, right above the nose light. These two lights right here are marker lights and these are the ditch lights right here and right here. We have some MU sockets here on either side of the locomotive. You can see the lovely phase three scheme, by the way. A few more sockets here, the coupler cut bar, a large snow plow, MU, MU cables right here and right here, two air brake hoses, and the Atherns McHenry knuckle coupler right there. All right, so now let's get on to some rear detail. 
All right, so now we're looking at the rear of the locomotive, and as you can see, it's very angled there at the at the top. Anyway, starting at the top here, we have a headlight right here, the, re the rear headlight that does operate when the locomotive is in motion. Two marker lights, one right here and one right here. Two number boards, 822, 822 right there as well. I do not believe those light up, but that's okay. We have two Sanfro hatches, one right here and one right here. A window right here to look inside the locomotive. A window on the door, actually, right here. There's the door handle. There's an Amtrak right there. Some more MU hoses and cables and an air brake and the, and the knuckle coupler right here. And you can just see it. There is the coupler cut bar and a few grab irons right here and right here. Um, unfortunately, there are no spare knuckles on there, but that's okay. They're probably on the side. But anyway, let's look at the side detail. Looking at the side of the locomotive, I want to quickly mention that the P42, the P40, and the P32, they all have a monocoque design which means that this is the exterior of the locomotive is one big shell which makes it easier to repair all you have to do is tie, unloosen a few bolts and some other like rivets and all that and the whole top of the locomotive will come right off so you can access the engine it's a lot more uh um cost effective when it comes to repairing the, the locomotive however if it's involved in a, in a crash or a wreck or a collision it makes it a lot harder to repair but anyway Looking at our looking at the side here, the conductor side, we have a side mirror right here, which I believe is actually falling off because there's like a little hole right there. But I'll have to take a look. So here are the side windows right here. Little 822 on the door, which is a strange angled version right here. Some ladder grabs right here and right here. Two door handles, one right here and one right here. This is for when you're climbing up the locomotive. This is for when you want to get out. Some steps right here. An electrical box right here. There is an F to indicate this is the front of the locomotive, a GE builder's plate. Here is the trucks and the engines. No rolling end caps, which is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. We have some grates as we move along this way, as you can see right here, right here, and some more there. And this is the phase three variant, which means it has the red, white, and blue stripes, which is very nice. As we move along here, you can see that the fuel tank is actually in, it's enclosed by this um, skirt, I guess if that's what you want to call it. You can actually see the air tank reservoirs right here as well. A lovely Amtrak right up there. And as we move along, you can see that this was their kind of idea. This was an interesting design. As you can see, the phase three kind of fades away. That's to kind of in that's kind of to represent like the speed and the power of these locomotives and like how quick that by the time you see that it's gonna be a blur. And as you can see, the number 822. And it's actually kind of, and that, and the number, the Amtrak and the 822, they're actually kind of made of this weird reflective. So if you were to shine a light on it, it would reflect back. So almost like reflective tape. And as you can see, there's a side door right here with some steps as well as some grabs, which is very nice. It's pretty much the same on the engineer's side. In fact, it is literally quite the same, except for there's only one big electrical box as opposed to two. And let's just move the locomotive forward. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. All right, so now let's look at some roof detail. All righty, looking at the roof of the locomotive, we have two antennas, one right here and one right here. And as we move the locomotive forward this way, you can see a lot of safety labels and all that. And this one says, right, caution, the, lift, the lifting ball is for lifting cover only. And this is a K5LA air horn by Nathan. That is the voice of Amtrak. Whoa, almost fell. As we move along, you can see the exhaust right here, as well as the radiator. And unfortunately, that fan does not uh, move when the locomotive is on the track. But that would be pretty cool if it did. All right, so now let's get into let's get into the sound demo. All righty, so now we have the locomotive up on the test track. It's time to uh, well. Uh, here are our sound demonstrations. Let's go ahead and put power onto the track here. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and put the main headlight on, which is uh, F0. You can see it is on. F5 turns on the ditch lights. Very nice. F1 is the bell. Kind of quiet. F2 is a longhorn. And watch the strobe lights, which are up here, and the ditch lights, they do flash. 
never mind the ditch lights do not flash i am completely silly but you see the strobe lights are flashing and that is very loud not only for you guys it's also loud for me and my ears f3 is a short horn F4 is the dynamic brakes, but that only really works when you're actually running the locomotive. F5, we'll get that. F6 is another lighting effect, which I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but oh well. F7 is crew chatter. You can barely hear it. It is so quiet, which is a little bit of a shame. Anyway, let's throw it into reverse and have it reverse away from it. That is why you always make sure your controls are all the way at zero. <laughs> Whoops. A little bit more back there. past camera here. Let's get into my final thoughts. So overall, I think this is a very good lo looking locomotive. I really like the design of the P40s and the P42s and all that. It's always been kind of a favorite of mine. And I just love that overall uh, phase three scheme. It was really unique. And it was just um, the phase three on the, on the B32s and the P40s. It was just a very unique scheme. I liked it very much. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I got my... Um, I got mine from my local hobby shop, which is like a 30 minute drive from here. And I do think I paid a little too much for it, but you know, that's okay. Um, I do, there are still a lot on sale in, on Lombard Hobbies, as well as uh, like Midwest Model Rail, Railroad Store, whatever they're called. So I do recommend you guys check out their shops if you can, and you'll definitely get a, a slightly better price than what I had to pay for. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.